Lots of alternators. Well, I just poked through all the ones I had laying around here because this blue bomber was missing one. Guess which one fit the best? The one off the Toyota Cressida. Hasn't been on there for eight or nine years. Some woman wanted to buy it for her car. She never showed up. I took it off the same time I parked it in the forest. And anyways, well, it was a good one back then. But I don't have a belt. So let's hope the stock belt, if I go to Canadian Tire, is going to fit if I buy one. Since all alternators work pretty much the same, I saved the connector on it and just snipped a couple wires and rigged it up the way the Toyota was wired. Any alternator will work in any car if you wire it right and can make it fit. I did have a problem at the bottom where the clevis was, trying to make that three inches wide, but I did it, so it's going to work. Now way back down here behind all this crap, was this little tiny hose. I took her out for a test drive today. She started pissing antifreeze everywhere. So if you look really 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 close, where is it now? So close, there's a pinhole at the tip of my thumb. There you can see it. Well when the motor got hot it started squirting out backwards to get everything wet. Let's take all that crap out of the way and I just put a used piece of fuel line in there. We're looking at that sucker. So off to the scrap heap you go. And there's my batteries that didn't survive the winter. Won't hold a charge. Next thing, if you haven't noticed, it sat too low for off-road. You don't want to go over all those jumps with your belly pan dragging underground because you wanted to show off you were a low rider. That rips out your gas tank and your oil pan. That sucks. So I noticed that it had these aftermarket adjustable coil springs and thingy dings on it where you can just get a spanner wrench and turn these up and jack her up to max so that's what I did. So I took this handy dandy tool which I found inside the car and they were sitting way down here these locking rings and they weren't too tight I spun them all the way up to the top and now we got some clearance I hope. The bead on that tire was all chewed up and chunks out of it so it kept leaking out so I put it on my machine squeezed the bead off and broke it and got some roofing glue. Well anyways this gooey white stuff patched up the seal around the rim and the tire and now she holds air. Found it a little while later that the interior light stayed on for some reason couldn't turn them off so just charging up that battery for now since the alternator doesn't have a belt yet. And lo and behold for some reason the fuel gauge started working today. And this switch does one rad fan. You can hear it. And that does the other. As you can see, there's two of them. So as you can see, B plus is turned on. NOS fully loaded. Just kidding. And yeah, we got about 10 bucks of fuel just like I said and has 229,639 kilometers. That's a lot for one of these engines. That's why this one looks like it's been redone. Definitely a new head on it. Sounds sweet. Did find the original knob in the glove box. Got a little cap and another in there. I think I'll put it back on. I don't like slamming my knuckles against there since I already got one bashed one. That don't feel too good. Found the switch for the other window. And it works too. Come on. There you go. I was in the glove box with all the other crap. Canobians and everything. Took some steel wool and got all that years of gunge off the windshield from sitting underneath a maple tree. Trying out my new ZR 950 camera I just bought for $229 on sale. Canadian. Let's see how it works. It does widescreen. I don't know if Windows Movie Maker edits widescreen properly or not. Let's see how it goes to Windows directly and then to YouTube. So even though we're all jacked up, I've been screwing around with the engine too to see if I can get rid of that misfire in the low RPM range. And it seems to be like, pretty good most of the time. It doesn't fire up right away. It usually farts for a while because it's got no back pressure, but let's see what happens. I like the long shifters better. Oh yeah, this is gay. You gotta do like several tries like this. Yeah! Cool! 
And for some reason, someone's unhooked the power system, power steering system on this car. You'll notice there's no power steering pump. There's nothing hooked to the idler pulley. And there's the cooling tube to cool the power steering fluid. Well, it's got quick ratio turning, but that don't feel too good when you're trying to drive one hand with a camera. The exhaust manifold's been re-welded, but I don't feel nothing, so it's not leaking. Someone actually had an alarm in here, like they imagined someone would steal a piece of crap like this. Maybe someone did. Maybe that's why the ignition's all buggered. Everybody's been telling me this was made in the USA. It really isn't Jap crap. I looked all over. I couldn't find that. It doesn't say. Not even inside the door. Probably put the sticker there as you leave your seatbelt there and go to slam the door. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, look what happens. She's growing whiskers. Come on. Ugh. Must have went through the car wash and ripped off some of those bristles. Since the head looks new, the timing belt is actually perfect. Except that's a horrible idea to cut that open because in the wintertime, if snow blows in there, like it likes to do in my cars, flips off your timing belt and screws your motor. And these are interference motors, and that's definitely a big problem. I guess not bad for free if you like a piece of junk. With a totally tacky, tacky interior, with a gray door panel, and a multicolored one, and seats that don't match, and some funky flashing lights, or whatever the hell this is for. And lots of spare parts that hit you in the head when you have an accident or stop at a beer store, or to meet a pretty chick. Now the fart can wasn't actually functional, because someone stole the catalytic converter off this car. Well, as we look underneath, that's where it used to be. So as you can hear, pop, pop, snap, crackle, whatever you want to call it, the thing still farts without a fart can. So if this thing were in that movie, it wouldn't be called the Fast and Furious, it would be called the Fast and Partiest, that's for sure. But it does sound nice when you're giving her, stepping on her. Oops, better shut it off. I forgot there was uh, no turning water pump. Yep, she's getting up there now. Brrr. Gee, what a queef.